This is War Map. Battle for Belogorovka, Advance of the Russian Armed Forces in the Forest and Battles near the Chalk Quarry. For a long time, the situation near Belogorovka was hidden by the fog of war, but the appearance on the internet of new footage from this area allows to clarify the situation a little. In the area of Serebryansky Forestry north of Grigorovka, the Russian armed forces, after several attacks, were able to occupy several branches of the Seversky Donetsk River, establishing control over the Belogorovsky Forest Reserve. Footage of objective control by the AFU confirms fighting in this direction. For more than six months, the front in this sector was static, but it revived after the recent Russian successes at Dybrova. To the east of Belogorovka, the Russian armed forces reached landings on a hill, one of the dominant heights. In the same area, the AFU had previously published footage of the defeat of Russian equipment. Further offensive there is complicated by extensive mining of the area. To the south, the Russian armed forces have advanced somewhat in the area of a large chalk quarry and the Papasniansky water canal. Moreover, about a week ago the AFU tried to attack in that area, but apparently very unsuccessfully. In Kursen direction, the AFU command continues attempts to move more manpower and weapons to the left bank by boats with homemade ice protection. Heavy fighting continues in Krinky. There is information from Nikolaev that columns of AFU equipment are being sent to Snijarevka, and new Ukrainian units are being formed in Nikolaev. In Krinky, the AFU are holding positions in ruins under the fire of RF artillery and drones, and are trying to replenish personnel through the Dnieper. There are artillery attacks from both sides, and the superiority of a few drones in the air remains. Ukrainian military formations are increasing their presence in the Kherson region. This was confirmed by the representative of the local legislative authority, Yuri Barbashov. According to his information, the Russian side notes the arrival of additional units of Ukrainian troops in the Snedjerivka area. Local residents are observing the intensification of training activities of the armed forces of Ukraine on the territory of the adjacent training grounds. This indicates that new units of the Ukrainian army are preparing for combat operations. According to previous reports from the Kherson authorities, a few forces are suffering significant losses on the opposite bank of the Dnieper. Their attempts to organize new landing operations are successfully thwarted due to RF artillery fire. In Donetsk's direction, in the south of Avdivka, the AFU are throwing infantry into the battle, trying to cut off RF ledge, which is almost two kilometers deep in their defense. At the same time, the main forces of the AFU are systematically retreating from the south towards the coke plant, a powerful fortification which RF have still to take. South of Pervomeske, RF forces have established firm control over positions and are moving on. The AFU claims that RF managed to break through to their rear at the Tsarskaya Okoda fortified area thanks to a pipe discovered by RF from the Yasinovatskaya junction. New footage and information has been disclosed on how the assault on the royal hunt was organized. Some time ago, RF intelligence officers developed and carried out a plan unimaginable in its audacity, in conditions of maximum secrecy, an abandoned flooded underground pipe leading to the area of the CO base. Royal Hunt was cleared by hand. In the icy, muddy water, trying not to make a single sound, the RF engineers carried out a colossal amount of work, preparing the way for the passage. On January 17th, the RF set out on an underground two-kilometer march to the central base and emerged from underground behind a few lines. The CO garrison was destroyed without a few having time to react. The survivors surrendered. The operation was carried out so cleanly that the main a few forces did not know about the loss of the CO for another day. The RF troops took advantage of the factor of surprise and eliminated the AFU stronghold in the forest to the west of the central district and on Skodovat clearing the rear, after which they entered the city, where they cleared AFU troops in the private sector. For another day, 
the AFU made attempts to knock out our F soldiers, until they realized that it would not be possible to do this in a swoop, after which, on January 20th, the AFU's telegram channels began to complain about our F success in the central district area. No one has ever won such a victory. The act planning and execution was delivered straight from Hollywood movies. Ukraine's failures in the conflict with Russia and blocked Western assistance have led President Vladimir Zelensky to despair, writes ABC. In desperation, the Ukrainian leader is waiting for a favorable change in the international situation. He finds himself in an extremely difficult situation. Zelensky is failing in the conflict with Russia, his allies are tired, corruption is rampant in Ukraine, and the president's disagreements with his country's military leadership are undeniable, the publication says. The article notes that the military initiatives of the head of the Kiev regime are limited to isolated and dispersed actions, which, however, are immediately exaggerated by some media, creating an image of capabilities that Ukraine actually does not have. The publication writes that Zelensky is trying to prevent the conflict from ceasing to attract attention against the backdrop of other international problems, but Russia has a better chance of success. On June 4, the Ukrainian armed forces launched a counteroffensive in the Yuznodonetsk, Bakhmut and Zaporizhzhia directions, throwing into battle brigades trained by NATO and armed with foreign equipment. But they were unable to overcome even the tactical defense of Russian troops and suffered serious losses. Against this background, Western media are increasingly writing that the United States and the EU have begun to get tired of the Ukrainian crisis and support for Vladimir Zelensky is weakening. According to NBC, American and European officials are already discussing with Kiev authorities the possible consequences of peace talks with Russia, including what the former Soviet Republic might have to give up to reach an agreement. Kiev took responsibility for the destruction of the Russian IL-76 with 65 captured Ukrainian Armed Forces soldiers on board. The Ukrainian general staff claims that the plane was shot down by a Patriot air defense missile. Allegedly, it was used to transport ammunition for the S-300. The second plane, flying behind and transporting another 80 prisoners of the Ukrainian armed forces, was urgently turned back to the departure airport. Ukrainian leadership knew who, what and where the POW exchange was occurring and how the Ukrainian POWs were being transported and purposefully destroyed their own military personnel. Why did Kiev commit a such attack? Goals, in short. Accusation of murdering Russians. The information field was filled with pre-prepared falsehoods that the Russians deliberately destroyed Ukrainian captured soldiers. Scare your own soldiers. Fear retribution even in Russia. This once again reinforces that Ukrainian soldiers should avoid surrender of hope for a safe exchange in the future. Make yourself known to Western curators again. It is becoming increasingly difficult to carry out high-profile attacks at the front, problems with weapons and ammunition, as well as the advance of the Russian army, are compressing the window of opportunity. And it is necessary to do bloody PR campaigns to stir up sentiment that the Russian army cannot protect prisoners, even on the territory of its own country. Ukrainian propaganda hastened to disown the attack on the IL-76 plane, as a result of which several dozen captured Ukrainian armed forces soldiers were killed today in the Belgorod region. For this purpose, Ukrainian channels started a rumor that the plane was shot down by Russian air defense but the facts indicate precisely an attack from Ukraine. Initially, this version was confirmed by numerous Kiev media pages. They published posts rejoicing over the downed plane, not realizing that they had killed of their own soldiers, whom they were transporting for exchange. An analysis of the situation speaks about the strike by the Ukrainian armed forces. Most likely, the plane was shot down by a Pac-2 missile from the Patriot complex. This is the main type of missiles available to the Ukrainian armed forces for the American system. The missile covers the distance from Kharkov, 
where Patriot batteries are present, to the site of the plane crash in 100 seconds. According to reports from the Russian Ministry of Defense, the launch was carried out from the village of Lipsy in the Kharkov region, which is located only 100 kilometers from the site where the plane was hit. According to the department, the Ukrainian armed forces fired two missiles at the plane. It is noteworthy that the system was most likely in combat readiness, since deployment takes approximately 20 to 30 minutes. Taking into account the humanitarian mission of the plane and the Ukrainian side's advance information about the time and place of the exchange of prisoners of war, this allows to draw an unambiguous conclusion. The attack was planned by the Ukrainian leadership from the very beginning. All this confirms that the plane was shot down by the Ukrainian armed forces from the Patriot complex. But once again Ukraine will blame Russia. Russia in turn will attempt to voice their concern at UN. UN will issue a vague statement with no further action taking place. Some of the people who were being taken to the exchange were waiting for two years to be returned back. Among some of the Ukrainian POW were members of Azov who surrendered during the Mariupol siege and later Azovstal. They have been asking Ukrainian authorities for an exchange for two years, only to be betrayed at the last possible moment. If you can't give us, can't give us some financial support, okay, okay, please, give us a credit and we will give you back money after the war.